right, welcome to the Hammer Podcast. All right, friends, today, for 1995, you can sow your seed for health, wealth, and prosperity. That's right, just one payment each month of 1995. Oh, wait. Oh, wrong show. This, this is not a tele-evangelism show. No, not quite. <laughs> not quite, not quite. All right, friends. Well, look, we're back with the Hammer Podcast, and today we wanted to ask Pastor Mike, why is it that he doesn't like preaching on tithing and giving and things like that? It seems to be something that we don't bring up all the time, so why, why is that the case? Well, you just gave us the case with your... With I was your, Creflo Dollar. Yeah, Creflo Million Dollar Jet Airplane. With your uh, intro there, that's exactly why. Because, you know, throughout the years, there have been people that look at some believers, especially those in the ministry, as charlatans if they bring up money and that sort of thing. And uh, so I, in terms of just doing a topical study and just preaching on it to preach on it, uh, that's not something that I've really done uh, in the past. However, as we go expositionally through a book, uh, when we come to those passages, we, we need to present those passages. And look, you know, we want to preach the whole counsel of God, and that is part of the counsel of God. Right. Um, so I'm wrong for not wanting or not, I shouldn't even say I don't like it. I love preaching God's word, right? But. I don't, I don't ever want to make it look like I'm saying, "Hey, give," you know, as if this is going directly into my bank account. So because... we can have a jet for gospel <laughs> right. ministry, luxury right. jet. Yeah, of that's course. right. So yeah. uh, I'd be, I'd be happy with a bicycle. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so that's why. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, and like you'd said in the sermon on Sunday, Jesus talks about money five times more than any other subject. I think you'd mentioned it's it's over 300 times that money is either mentioned or alluded to. Yes, that's right. And and by the way, I didn't sit down and count all of that I'm taking. Uh, wait, wait. You didn't have a calculator and count <laughs> word no. letter by letter? No, I didn't. I'm trusting uh, the great late preacher... S. Lewis Johnson for that number count. Amen. He was a great one. Uh, He was. Now, look, certainly every time Jesus alludes to or speaks of money, he he is not speaking of giving necessarily. Sometimes it's investment and it has uh, has to do with using our spiritual abilities and gifting and so forth, right? Right. But the point is Jesus does speak about a lot, which tells us it is important uh, as far as our heart's attitude toward uh, money and toward things, right, right, that God gives us. Right. Yeah, that's good. Well, and speaking of the importance of the heart and its connection to money and where we take and spend our money, um, all the numbers seem to suggest that the younger generation of professing believers are giving even, are giving less money while making more money than the previous generations. Why do you think that's the case? Yes, well... Again, yeah, when you look at almost any metric um, from the organizations and and the people who put together these polls and and work these numbers, you know, I I don't know. I mean, the word dedication um, is is something that comes to mind that this generation tends to be, you know, as you get younger and younger by the generation, there, there tends to be less. Of, of a dedication towards almost anything. Uh, right. But that includes a, a local church. Now, that again, that's certainly, I'm speaking in a general way, because we have some young folks that are very much connected to the local church and uh, and are dedicated, and that's great. I'm just saying, as a generality, uh, the younger and younger we go in our society, the less dedicated they are to, to almost anything. And yeah. uh, unfortunately... Uh, that includes the, the church, the local church. Which I think, you know, the sad that sad reality leads us into the question on culture. And what kind of cultural impact does this lack of giving have or represent, you know, it, with, with the local church? 
and even Christianity. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I we're not going around, as Jesus says in the beginning of chapter 6, right? We're not going around, hopefully, letting everyone know, you know, what we give or, or you know, we're not letting our... Uh, right hand know what our left hand's doing, our left hand know what our right hand's doing, so forth, right? But uh, but I do think that that lack uh, of giving certainly is not a, a good testimony. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I know someone, for instance, uh, in, in my own family, uh, they don't live around here, but... Uh, but they're believer, and and for many years uh, they've given back to the Lord as they felt uh, compelled to, and and they're blessed with what we would consider a decent amount of wealth, and uh, their accountant they've had the same accountant for years, and this accountant uh, marvels. This accountant is an unbeliever, and he marvels at what he gives and he even remarked uh, i don't know five seven years ago something like that to this person he he said you know all this money that you've been giving to the church over the years you know if you would invest this or put this in the stock market you know this is this is what you would have right right so uh (laughs) you know so i think it's look it certainly is is a good testimony in those ways because i mean you can't hide it from your accountant yeah, right. Right. Um, but I just think in general, uh, the world should hear that professing believers uh, are, are big givers and, and most specifically to the church. Yeah. You know, because I think it also depends what we give toward, right? Right. Okay. It, it is my conviction, and if I had time, I could make a case for this scripturally, I believe, okay, we want to be about the gospel getting out. Right. Yes, we can help somebody with clothing we can help give somebody food uh water right those are all those are good and and those are essentials of life right but if that's all we do that's just making them more comfortable on their way to hell right that's not what we're called that's not our primary right the primary task is to preach the gospel right and so i think and so i think that's where uh our funds should should go you know in other words, I think it's a problem if if you if you're giving to a political party or a political candidate more than you're giving to God or anywhere close to what you're giving to God, I think I think that's a problem. You sure. might say, "Well, wow, that's your conviction." Okay, I I think I can make a biblical case. Right, I think that right. that's a problem, uh, and we could you know we could go down the list and say, "Hey, if you're giving to this." organization or that organization that that isn't christian and really i think i can make a case that the vast majority of our giving should be running through a local church right right uh for accountability reasons and the fact that god set up the church uh and even in terms of widows and orphans right right we read, we read in james all of that running through the church so yeah which um, it brings up an interesting question about the parachurch and its relationship but that's for another another time yes, I that, think. that would take a while to unpack uh, but but getting back to the you know what the cultural well again I just think it's another one of those things where when we do what God's word tells us to do we are the best witness we can be right you know sometimes we think well man if I, if I do this well see if we're just obedient to God and his word everything else falls in place right funny right just obey God and everything works away God's According to his plan. Right. It's not like we need some special program. We need some special agenda, right? We, we, no, no. We, we simply need to obey him and his word. And I'm speaking as a man who has a hard time doing that. So I'm not at all speaking like I've got this down. I'm speaking to myself too, right? But if we would just obey God, then we will be the witness we should be. Everything will, will fall into place. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I, I am, uh, you know... We definitely need to teach, uh, by example, uh, our own generation and then the younger generations coming up, what God says about money. It's all His. Right. And so whatever we have, He has entrusted to us. And in fact, He has given us as much as He can trust us with. Yeah. So if you don't have as much as you would like to have, you know, we really need to just look in the mirror. Right. Right? That's a true statement there. 
is it is there a the lack of giving is that a sign of a cultural shift away from Christianity in this you know at least maybe in America yeah. or is that not connected well, I th- I think it's connected yeah now certainly I could never you know prove that we don't know what people are thinking but as a generality in our society, we do not see uh, people gravitating more towards uh, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, right? We do not see people uh, going above and beyond in, in their commitment. We see a lot of, even among those who would be professing believers, right? We see a lot of uh, uh, watered down right. uh, gospel. Uh, watered down teaching of the Bible in Spurgeon's day, you know, it was known as the downgrade. Yeah, right. Well, we see that in our day, uh, I think. So, so I think, yeah, as a general principle, um, we're, we're we're seeing that. Yeah, and just the advent of people being entertained at church rather than the Bible being proclaimed, guarded, defended. Yeah, and there really are, and and this has probably always been this way. Sometimes we think things are new, right? But there's really nothing new under the sun, but there definitely is a sense among some where church is kind of a country club. Yeah. Um, although I try to remind people, you, at a country club, you still have dues, right? <laughs> right. Uh, They're pretty steep, too. Like know, at Augusta. Right? Yeah, right, Gosh, right. right. You pay a lot of money for that. Yeah, right. so I mean, you, you know, uh, but I, I think, you know, when I try... I think it's kind of the welfare mindset almost, but it's just like I'm going to show up to church, and and I'm going to take from the church, but I'm not going to give anything. Right. Um, if if one of my children get married or something, we need the church building. Right. Or we need the church building or the church grounds for this or that, but but we're not going to pay anything. And you and you just wonder what you know. I don't know how they think that the bills are paid and and and. Uh, the missionaries are taken care of. Right. Um, and certainly, uh, I can go back to doing plumbing. I can go back to doing whatever and be bivocational, right? But I can't do that and give the depth of teaching that I'm able to give. Right. And some of the uh, counseling and discipleship that I'm able to give, okay? Um, so, I mean, there are certain things that we have a budget for. Right. Uh, and and why anyone would just think that they can come and, and take part in this, but shouldn't feel any obligation to really have skin in the game by by giving. And I, I don't understand that. And again, it comes back to being a matter of the heart, which is exactly what Jesus was saying. Right. Yeah. Which I thought was great how just you started out with that and ended with that, that this is really an issue of the heart. Yeah, and that's really what it is. Right. I mean, look, we, we've, we've got our wallets and we hold on tight to them. That's that's the reality. Right. Which brings us to the Inquisition, one of the the favorite moments of the podcast. So let me reach into the vault. Yes, all right, here we go. I've got here in my hands one of the questions that, well, shockingly enough, fits right into the theme of money. Oh, it's almost as if we planted this, but but we don't do that. Almost as if, almost as if we planted that. But nevertheless. That would be almost like giving, uh, oh, I don't know, certain candidates for offices the questions ahead of time. That never Wait, happens either. they would so, not. No, no, no. That, no, that would never happen. No, that would no. never happen and we would never plan a question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. That's exactly right. But in regards to money, is the New Testament believer, because obviously people are starting to feel convicted, maybe we should give more money. All right, is the New Testament believer bound by the 10% tithe? Well, um there are people smarter than me uh, that would argue on, on both sides of that. Um, as I believe I mentioned Sunday briefly, and I've certainly dealt with this in more depth, the 10% tithe, certainly it, w- it was given under the Mosaic Law, and, and it was a Levitical tithe. It was to the priest. It was for the priestly service, which would certainly be akin to the church, right? Sure. Uh, we, we are not it's not a total equivalence, okay? Uh, we're not a priest in that way and so forth, okay? But, um, so we're, we're bound, as we've taught extensively, uh, we, we are bound by 
that we are under the law of the Messiah, not the law of Moses, as we've explained in great detail as we've gone through Matthew, right? So uh, I would say that that we are not. However, it's interesting, uh, and people will point out that Abraham, before the Mosaic Law, right. gives, gives 10% to Melchizedek. To Melchizedek. And that is, uh, that, that's a good argument. Right. Uh, so, so, to be honest with you, I would say I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I would say we're not bound from this standpoint. Uh, we, we are to give, as, as God gives us increase, and we can even go above and beyond that as those in Macedonia did and Paul spoke of in Second Corinthians, right? Um, so, so, I, so I think my personal conviction is 10% is a good baseline for everyone to begin with. Right. But then there are some people that should be giving 80%, right. 90%. Okay, Some people should be giving 20%. So in that way, I, when I say I, I don't think we're bound by it, it doesn't mean I'm saying you should only give 2%. Because when we come to the New Testament under the law of the Messiah, anytime we see the law of the Messiah, it's not as if things are kind of really loosened up, right? It's not, right? Jesus didn't say, because under the Mosaic law, right, we just go back a little earlier right. to the Sermon on the Mount. Under the Mosaic law, it wasn't, hey, you, you only commit adultery if you actually do the act. You only lust if you actually, right? Right. Uh, it, murder. If, if, you right, only murder. You only murder if you, no, no. Jesus says, no, no, no. If you think it in your heart, so all, so all of a sudden the the requirement, the standard escalate is higher, not not lower. Yeah, right. So do we think this standard then is should, lower? Should be lower. Now I tell you an ironic thing, and uh, all one of the things I've noticed uh, in my Christian life is when I do run into people who love to be about the Mosaic Law. Uh, the interesting thing is, and they're all about like, well, we need to follow the law for this, this, and that. Yeah, yeah. They don't never follow it. In giving 10%? Wait, shocking. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, that is a fascinating point. Uh, so, you know, I just talked to a guy the other day. You know, he said, ah, we need to keep, I invited him to church. Ah, we need to keep the Sabbath. I'm not coming to church. All this stuff. I said, really? Okay. I said, he, he owns a construction company. And uh, <laughs> I said, oh, I said, well, do you also, do, do you take off every seventh year? Yeah. He's like, well, no, you know, I know I need to do that, but I haven't gotten to that point yet, you know. So uh, I always laugh at some of this, but uh, but anyway, that would be my best answer for for the ten percent. You know, you, look, you just have to go by how God, uh, you know, is working in your heart, and remembering that one day, when there's not me, there's not you next to them, there's no one but them before the Lord at the bema. Right, and that's when it will all come to life. Yeah.